Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be looking at three more AI tools for research, in particular for doing a literature review or searching for citations and references and information on a topic. I've already done a couple of videos on tools like this, most recently this one here on consensus, and previously one of my more popular videos where I looked at Elicit and SciSpace. So if you haven't seen those already, check those out. I will link them up for you. But the ones we're looking at today, we've got Semantic Scholar, Cite, and Connected Papers. So let's start off with a Semantic Scholar. Semantic Scholar, you could kind of think of as a Google Scholar on steroids. It does some of the same things where we can put in some search terms and it will find relevant papers for us. But one thing that's really nice is it has a TLDR. It's always nice to be able to get a succinct summary. In addition to this, it will flag particular papers that have highly influential citations. Again, this is handy for being able to filter out particular papers that are more influential and going to be more useful for us to be able to cite. Also, just like Scholar, uh, you can get it to export a nice citation for you. So we've got BibTech, MLA, APA, and Chicago in there, just like you can do in Google Scholar. I guess if you didn't know that, that's a handy little tip in Google Scholar. You can just hit the little quotes button and get a formatted citation to be able to put into your work. The other nice thing with Semantic Scholar is it's just a little bit more orderly in terms of being able to save, create an online library. It doesn't quite have the features that something like EndNote does, uh, but for those of you that have used EndNote and got endlessly frustrated, I could certainly see some tools like this eventually surpassing it. The fact that this is web connected, so you're actually able to do your citing and your linking all together, I think is really, really helpful. And then finally, it's got an AI powered paper recommendations. And I'm not quite sure how this good this is. I've only had a little bit of a play with this tool. And so far, I have to say I have been impressed, but I think this is something where it will develop and get even better over time. Just like Google Scholar again, so you can see lots of features similar to Google Scholar. We can get notifications on new papers, so we can follow papers and authors and topics and things like that. And then finally, a couple of, I guess, more technical ones, access to the corpus via GitHub. Uh, there's an API. Semantic Reader is another neat little tool. Uh, very much like with SciSpace, they had the Copilot. All of these AI tools that can summarize, can look up and help you to understand papers, I think are really, really neat. Such a big advance on what we've been working with for, say, the last kind of 10 to 15 years where Google Scholar was a pretty big advancement over the early databases, but this is just a whole order of magnitude better again. So let's do a couple of searches and see how this goes. Okay, so starting off with an author search, and if we're going to do an author search, why not do a vain one? My name we can see is common enough that it comes up in things that are not written by me, although a couple of them look pretty interesting there. This one here is me though, so let's jump in. And so it gives a really nice, nice succinct summary, just like Scholar does. We can see the various different things that I've published in there. It has uh, information on the citations for this paper, the highly influential citations, links to be able to view full text. We can save, we can get alerts, we can follow the author. You can also, if you find yourself, put in a claim for that particular page. So we can see that I've put in the claim. I don't have it just yet though. I've got a couple of filter boxes up the top here as well, which are pretty handy. So if you have a particular author whose work you are interested in, be able to find it all here. And really I've been pretty impressed. It's done a pretty good job. Some of the other tools you find only have fairly short incomplete sets of citations. This one is so far with the things I've looked at been pretty good. Going through the pages, we're now down onto page five. So the very final page. And this is actually really interesting. There's a couple of, I guess, papers slash abstracts here from conferences that I presented in quite some time ago that I actually don't even think have been captured in Google Scholar. 
pretty sure this XL one from way back in 2006. I haven't really seen that reference anyway. I'd almost forgotten that I'd presented that. The other thing though is that there are a couple. This one about birds is not me. This one about driving a car is not me. It'd be interesting to see once I get ownership of my own page whether I can then remove these. Currently I cannot. So there's nothing for me to flag that actually this Al Walker is not me. These this one, this one, this one, it's pretty good. Most of these are. There's a couple that are not, clearly 1985. Would have been pretty impressive as a seven year old to be getting published then. Give an update when I find out once I get the claim on the site. So let's do another search. Let's search for a question instead. Okay, so I searched for does creatine improve bench press and we had a similar question on one of my earlier videos where we looked at some of those other tools. And so we notice here that this does behave very much like Google Scholar does. It does not take that as a question and try and really interpret the question. So we can see that we have some papers here about the eccentric of a bench press. It's not necessarily about creatine. Uh, we've got one that's about creatine. I guess we can dive in, but certainly in the uh, title here, there's no mention of bench press. Coming down, another one about creatine, but not necessarily bench press. So it is not taking a research question like something like illicit or consensus does and treating it as such. So we do need to keep that in mind and this is where having multiple tools we can work with is really helpful. Clicking on a paper we can see that it gives us details very much like Google Scholar does. It gives us the various different citations. We can get related papers. Uh, we link off to hopefully get to the full text information about the citations. So very kind of similar to Google Scholar in that respect. Moving now we have a research dashboard where we can see our most recent citations for our papers. So that is quite a nice one there. So finally I wanted to show you their semantic reader. We've got a paper here that we've opened up we can see that we can put in highlights, we can see the highlights of others, we can make and see annotations as well. So that certainly helps when we're doing that first pass through literature review and we've read the abstract and now we want to try and just get some key details out of a paper. We can download, we can share, we can save to our library. So just a few nice little features here, looking forward to seeing this expanding. Uh, and that certainly seems to be part of their roadmap. So from here we're going to move on to our next one which is Site. So Site is built a little bit more around being able to ask research questions. We can search for ourselves. I did that earlier. I won't bore you with a second version of that. Did a pretty reasonable job as well. Maybe not quite as good as Semantic Scholar but pretty good. Uh, but we can actually ask a question here and if we jump over to the one that I asked which was the bench press one and again not quite perfect. The first one it gives us is not about creatine but about leg drive but then when we come down gives us some so oral creatine uh, intermittent bounce of bench press so it has done a much much better job of trying to find things that we are actually interested in. And this is something that is, is pretty somewhat niche. I know that there's a few papers out there. There's not tons, but there's enough that we would expect to be seeing a few here. So site does look like it could be interesting. Uh, it can provide visualizations and dashboards and some interesting stuff, but it does start asking for your credit card very, very quickly. So you can log in just with your Google account but it tries to get you onto a free trial with your credit card pretty much straight away. And it does seem to kind of try and lock you out of some things. They do have a Chrome extension, which is nice. The layout, maybe not quite as intuitive, something to have a bit of a play with. On their plus side as well though, they have approached it perhaps a little bit more rigorously for those of you that are from an academic background. So we can see here that they had even published something about their smart citation index. So this is all built around trying to find the right citations for your research question. They're using deep learning and they've actually published this. So here in quantitative science studies. So you can have a read of that. It gives you a little bit more insight into the inner workings of the tool. 
So here's an example of one of those tools. So this is the visualization of your citations. So we've had a paper, here are the citations. We've got some color coding there of uh, supporting versus contrasting, which is pretty interesting. Just a nice way to be able to look at the various different citations of a paper. And then over here, we can also see a timeline. So we can see kind of the mix of the for and against over time. So if you're looking at something and you want to try and get a gauge of whether support for that particular paper or that particular concept has been increasing or decreasing over time, then we can see that in this little visualization. Not perfect, but certainly kind of an interesting, interesting thing and really makes the process of doing a literature review a little bit more interesting, a little bit more insightful as well. So you're not just having to read paper after paper and work out things by yourself. You can do things like these visualizations, like using the assistant to be able to get a much fuller picture of what's happening for your particular research question or in that domain that you're interested in studying. So coming from this one, this is very similar to our final tool, which is the connected papers one. So connected papers is very much about the visualization and the linking up of references and citations to one another. So we can do a search of our own, but we are just going to jump in and have a look at some of their examples. And so here we can see that it starts with a map very similar to what we just saw. And we can click through, we can kind of trace by time. We can use the buttons up here to filter for prior works and derivative works. Each time we click on one of these, we can get the information about it. We can click on open graph for that. We can add it as an origin point. So very much like that previous tool that we saw with site, but this one is not quite as locked down with the wanting to get the credit card and wanting to do the free trial. So I'm not sure whether you get much more. I think you get a little bit more flexibility in terms of what you're doing, but you get a lot more access uh, and can do some interesting things with it without, without having to get into doing the trial. Uh, we can see with this one, they've got the little color key down the bottom for timeline. Not sure that I love this whitey, whitish through to greenish. Um, I don't think that is the best contrast, but nice little tool. If we go and have a look at another one of their examples. So this is quite a nice one where we can see we've got the paper that we set as our origin. Uh, we've got all the offshoots off it, but then we've also got particular clusters. So we can see these ones, they link back to the origin, but we can also see those lines linking them to each other as well. So that can be quite a nice way when we are looking at a paper and looking at authors in a particular field to see who's grouping together, who's quoting. We can see down here, see this is the, the same person quoting themselves repeatedly. In fact, actually we can see, see they feature quite, quite extensively. So it lets us visualize this. Uh, I think this will be an increasing component of literature reviews. Certainly if I were at a conference, someone was talking about this stuff, then some of this mapping I think is actually much more interesting than just seeing bullet pointed lists of references. And then you can add the discussion around that, who's been citing who, uh, things like that. So that's it for today. Hopefully you found this useful. So we've had connected papers, site, which is site.ai, and Semantic Scholar. The one that I can see myself coming back to most often is the Semantic Scholar. So semanticscholar.org had a really good search. Didn't search that well for research questions, uh, but certainly in terms of seeing my own papers, that was nice and clear and very, very complete. I'm interested to see once I've claimed my own domain, whether I get a few more options. When I do get that, I'll add some information in the comments about it. I will link all of these up. I hope this has been helpful. If you haven't already liked and subscribed, please like and subscribe. I'll be back soon with more stats, research, AI, and random stuff.